Hello, hello, hello. You are watching the Zoom recording of my conversation with my dear friends and uh, esteemed talents, uh, Pierre Sendina Freelon. I have bad news and good news. The bad news is, is while recording the Zoom, it only recorded one side of, of the visuals. So uh, the good news is, is that side was of Pierce and Nina's side. So you get to watch their beautiful faces during the whole conversation. It seems the audio um, for both sides was recorded. Um, so yeah, I just recorded this video just to put it at the beginning and give you a look of <laughs> what they were looking at while having this conversation. So yeah, we touched on so many great points and ideas. I'm really excited to share this with you. So enjoy and leave comments and share. Uh, thank you very much. And here it is. So recording has started. Great. Hey, Nina and Pierce, how are y'all doing? Doing good. good. How are you doing? Ah, I'm doing so great, you know, um, just in general. And again, like I've been on the phone with Pierce every several months, <laughs> you know, and only recently we've been talking more frequently, uh, yeah. especially as uh the 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 particular project in my studio is like coming together and i've been just sharing it with him and then yeah you guys have so much uh uh energy uh spiraling based upon your latest visions you know so i i definitely just feel something really uh th there's a great vibe in the moment for sure you know so yeah. Yeah, it is a moment full of possibilities. And, um, you know, looking at current conditions is never where visionaries live. You know, yes. they're always looking beyond, mm -hmm. you yes. know, for the next thing, looking around the corner, yeah, eyes yeah. in the back of their heads, all that <laughs> kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. It's wonderful that you're doing this. Um, um, people be trying to catch up. Yeah. who are waiting for things to get better before they do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is a, a, a common point in conversations that I have with people when it comes to uh, looking at the times and waiting for things to get better, you know, mm -hmm. is uh, you, you have to tune to the channel of seeing that things are better or seeing that there's so many reasons to despair there's so many reasons to be worried there's so many reasons to not go outside you know but we are also in a time where it's the greatest time ever to be alive and to be creating and to be accessing opportunity and to be when it comes to being able to communicate on so many levels there's just so so much that's happened to bring this moment to us you know, that's so, true. that's so true. Right now, I'm talking to you guys as if you're sitting in the room with me. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's pretty. Like <laughs> this is my my you know our little communication device that when I was a young person on Star Trek, they flipped open something that looked like I don't know a wallet. Yes. Um, and they talked into it, and they pretended that someone, because they're actors, right? They were pretending that someone was, but I believe that. Yes. And now I have something more powerful than that device in my purse yeah. right now. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's, it's Lieutenant Uhura is right, right here on the bridge of the- it's On the bridge of the, of the enterprise. So, you know, we, we actually do, bring these things um, into existence with our creative energies. Mm -hmm. And so that is um, antithetical to the waiting for it to be cool before you decide you're gonna create. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when the world is cuckoo, it's a call for you to create some uncuckoo-ness. It's mm -hmm. prime time. 
prime time, man. Prime mm-hmm. time. Exactly. <laughs> like the, the stage is here for you, you know? Yeah, no, the, the pandemic in so many ways has like, I, I was talking to Pierce about this project and yeah, I, I, I was, I was just collecting client based work and very thankful to have, you know, the, the, uh, to put my brand and all the possibilities, you know, for people to reach out and have me get to work for them. But yeah, I, I, I knew that I needed to take a, take a step away and I needed something, uh, either I was going to try to have a shutdown moment where I could like dive in and start developing intellectual property, developing my version of Star Trek, my version of Disneyland, my version of whatever, or something was going to happen. And it happened, you know, like suddenly everybody's locked in and clients are like, ah, we're going to put this off for a couple of years. And I'm like, oh, oh, yes, let's go. Let's go. You know, and it's been, you know, the, the city of Old Ruth has, has, has presented itself to me and I'm, I'm twisting and turning, finding all sorts of possibilities, you know? So, yeah, I, even again, like paying attention to, to the, the, the creative space that you guys are launching from, you know, I'd, I'd love to have both of you talk about the projects that you have at hand, you know, including the two that are being recognized, you know, simultaneously by the, by, by the Grammys. Yeah. Well, I think, um, you know, both of our projects, my mother is nominated for a uh, best jazz vocal album for an album called time traveler, which, yeah. uh, <laughs> is just the perfect title, uh, for her, you know, everything you just said, mom, about, uh, being forward thinking and being visionary and, you know, I'm thinking about uh, the ways in which my father, who passed away in 2017, is in dialogue mm. with you through that album. You are able to transcend time through music, through smell, through art. You know, these these senses that we have are portals to other realities. And uh, as artists, we warp the senses to you know, tune the vibration to a, a certain frequency. And that's really what, what Time Traveler uh, says to me, uh, which is, a you know, in addition to everything I just shared, also just a beautiful jazz album by a, a legendary jazz musician. So that's my review of Time Traveler. What do you, <laughs> what do you think of Black to the Future? Well, you know, um, operating in a space where you have these tools, right? So maybe your tools are paintbrushes or maybe they're drumsticks, but the tools that you're bringing to bear um, in uh, Black to the Future is uh, communication with entities that you highly respect. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Everybody who's in the children's space does not respect children. And just, just so for the viewers who don't know what you're talking about, my album is called Black to the Future. It is a children's music album. So please yes. continue. Yes, <laughs> yes, being clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Black to the Future is a tool of offering, an offering of respect to young human entities. Um, and Pierce as a, as a, as a black man um, pushes against a narrative that says black men don't do that. Mm. That black men are hard and they're, you know, they're kind of more macho and they don't really deal with, you know, this other side of, of life, of the nurturing and the bringing up and the sharing of values with children. Mm. So it's a very creative enterprise. It's fun, it's joyful. It's hopeful, you know, it's, it's, and it doesn't play down and underestimate the power of these entities. Mm. Cause they're like, they're the ones who are teaching us some stuff. Yes. These younglings, I mean, they like, they know if you would only ask. 
I love that you're referring to children as younglings and entities. That's well, uh, that's what they are. <laughs> that's what they are. They are, you know, we think of when we say children, that brings a kind of power dynamic, like you are my child mm. kind of thing. And it, it doesn't have to be that, but we we need to uncouple my and child mm. and realize that we are actually the ones who are being taught by the children mm. who come to us and come through us. Yeah, that's real. Like they're the ones who got the full one one and we just better listen. That's, there's so much to that, you know? I, I think as you're saying that, it just makes me think of, again, the moment where, uh, again, technological progress, uh, advancement of the way we speak to each other, you know, the, the, the way we relate to each other, the way we um, communicate value, you know, towards each other. I think that there is, there's always, and I think that's just the nature of living and dying and being someone who knows you're closer to death than the person you're speaking to. And therefore you have a grudge to hold, you know, based upon that, <laughs> as opposed to gratitude for the experience thus far and the ability to, uh, to pass a brightly burning torch to them. You know, I think that that is sort of, um, uh, I, I, yeah, I think that there's, there's a lot of us who, you know, cause I, I even scroll through social media and I, I think of, it's, it's super interesting for me to scroll through uh, Facebook and see like people my age from high school uh, having something to say about the, 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 the way the youth are communicating and what they are saying. And, and I'm like, you guys grew up listening to NWA <laughs> and, <laughs> and the chronic and Snoop and this, that, or whatever. And they were pushing, you know, they, you were also listening to, to Tribe Called Quest. You were also listening to, to De La So. You are also listening to Lauren Hill. You are also listening to these, uh, these boundary pushing and uh, boundary breaking, advancing visionary voices. And it, to me... You know, I, I I guess I get a little critical. You know, when when I when I see uh, people, uh, like I, I remember songs from high school that were discussing, you know, like older people, please listen to us and respect us, and and give us the space to to push the narrative. And it's crazy that 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 people get older and they suddenly become their parents and they forget that there is, um, they become their parents, I should say, in the, the most conservative and fearful way. You know, mm. they, they, they lose faith in, they, they lose faith in what the youth are bringing to the table because the world looks so different and it feels scary and it feels, um, it, it, it's, it's, it, I think it's, I guess it's easier as you get older to, to, to turn to your fear, you know, and to, to, to not take a break and realize, no, the younger people have it. They, they, they always have it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, what did Stan Lee says in the, I guess, at least through X-Men, you know, people fear what they don't understand. And I think that's true as for elders, but it's not true for younger folks. There's a lot of curiosity in young minds and hearts and uh, maybe not as much fear as there should be, but that fear, whether it's fear of mortality or fear of change, you know, and Octavia Butler says God is change, which I love because it helps you see the 
um, divinity in the nature of the universe, which is change, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and when you accept that, uh, then you, you're really digging young people because they're in a constant state of change. Yes. Uh, but that can be difficult for some folks to absorb, especially when they're not changing anymore and the world around them continues to, to grow in the way that it always has. Mm -hmm. And so those intergenerational tensions that you uh, are referring to, I think are, you know, it's just a natural part of the, of the, of the growth process. I'm looking at your hat, it's a spiral. There's, you know, yeah, you, you start young and then you become the elder and then you transition. And then, you know, those, those cycles are as, uh, you know, as natural as the seasons. And um, I think that uh, that young people will always be confusing to folks who aren't uh, who aren't willing to embrace the yeah the divinity of change. Um, gotta love Octavia, man. Gotta she, love her. She had so many oh. gems. She really <laughs> did. She really did. And when you think about young and old, it only makes sense to even discuss things in those terms if you take a snapshot of where you are right now. If you take the spiral notion of we come and we go young and old doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. you're just on this path and you're at a certain point and you're moving toward another point mm -hmm. so it's yeah it's interesting i mean i think when i hear older folks or people bashing anything in a judgmental way it's kind of okay for everything not to be for you yes Absolutely. I mean, that's kind of okay. It's okay that I, I listen to some music and I'm like, well, clearly they weren't thinking about me. <laughs> and yeah. I, you know, and I'm like, peace and keep it moving. Yeah. You know, I don't have to, it doesn't have to be. And when something really does touch my heart, I'm curious to know who did that? Who, yeah. who, who, who are you? Yeah. 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 Want to know a little more about the story. So I think you said it, Pierce, that curiosity um, keeping that enacted through your whole life yeah. is, is a good stream of energy to use as you move through. And you ever meet, do you ever meet Joshua, Joshua, a uh, uh, OG who has just a young spirit, somebody who, you know, and the, that curiosity is a part of that. You know, I think about like a Baba Chuck or even a oh, Maya, yeah. Maya Angelou, like who we just found out. Yes. <laughs> has a new nft coin dropping it's the u.s <laughs> quarter um, dropping that coin on us yeah dropping that coin <laughs> on us like bow yeah and uh you know she just had a youthful spirit to her she yeah. was remained curious into her elder years which which carried with it a sense of you know which is a ma majestic pairing of wisdom and experience but but curious, creative curiosity, what a, what a pairing. Um, and it's childlike in some ways. Uh, but, but, you know, I think that, like, to your point, mom, calling them entities, childlike has a negative connotation of like immature. Yeah, we don't know where to put childlike. Although childlike has a very positive um, framing um, when you talk about beginner's mind. The it's one who, who doesn't have the baggage mm. to be afraid to try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see you smiling over there because you, you've had a child. Listen, I get childlike texts from this <laughs> brother on the weekly. Let's hear, about, let's hear one of them. About new <laughs> ideas just springing to life because your mind is constantly bubbling with this NFT project. Yeah, no, to, to touch on the the communication with children you know points that that we are exploring it, it makes me think of you know like i have no children but i follow um a couple really dope instagram accounts that are about parenting about uh just new revolutions in relating to our offspring and a, a heavy 
aspect of my thought process is managing my inner children. A, a heavy aspect of the pandemic as I've been diving into this project and I can feel like I've, I've always felt ambitious, but the more that I dive into the project, the grander the ideas become and the more ambitious this feels and the more my insecurities and, and uh, uh, what is a complex called when you, when you think you don't deserve? <laughs> oh yes, imposter is that worthiness. No, imposter no, syndrome. Or imposter syndrome. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Imposter what's, syndrome. What is that? It's 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 yeah. It's just the idea that um um that your accomplishments that you've gotten thus far are all a fraud you know well, are no all... i've never heard of it i just don't believe i that. know like that <laughs> that, speaks, that speaks to your healthy self-esteem and your healthy it does. psychology it really that you've been dealt thank you for for <laughs> but yes i i certainly my trauma certainly my experiences that i've had when i was a kid you know that that taught me, for whatever reason, it taught me that um, I'm unworthy of love. You know, I'm unworthy of respect. I'm unworthy of whatever, you know. I had to grow up and grow through that, you know. And now those inner children are my children, you know. And again, watching content from these Instagram accounts where they literally are talking about having a conversation with a five-year-old you know, having a conversation with a, a 10 year old, having a conversation with a 13, 14, you know, a, a young man, young boy, you know, it, it, it just created moments of just sitting down and calming, you know, the, the, the little me that lives inside, you know, and has, uh, like, like one thing as I've been exploring the inner child conversation with myself over the past, I would say six years is, um, and I'm sure psychology says this, that your memories dissipate, but uh, the, 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 the mental information dissipates, but the emotional information is crystallized inside you, you know, mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll have moments of, just deep sadness or deep loneliness or deep uh, or even elation and joy and possibility. Or you'll have moments of, again, self-doubt of thinking, you know, of, of this, that and whatever. And it's just based upon sometimes, sometimes inner 11 year old me pops up and feels lonely and sad and, and whatever. And I go and I take a walk. I take a walk with that young dude and give him time you know it's like stop working for a little bit sometimes sometimes inner four-year-old me starts acting up and i gotta go get a cookie you know and i gotta <laughs> go <laughs> i gotta go i gotta tend to it you know and i think that that is there's a lot of people that need to really develop strong relationships you know with managing their inner children before they have children, you know, and having that point of view, you know, especially if you've had a traumatizing, uh, a deeply traumatizing trauma filled childhood, you know, so that that said, you know, I, 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 I press play on um, the time traveler music video, you know, and it um, I, I think when it comes to the, the pandemic and there are so many people, uh, grieving and managing grief and with watching that video, you know, I saw just a, 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 a document of, of somebody diving into um, or exhibiting a, a method, a particular method of 
grieving in coming to terms with uh, with what that is. I, I saw it as a very useful um, expression that I actually think is one of the reasons why it is recognized is because it what it did resonate with the moment so much and yeah like having moments and meeting phil and just having like a couple moments it 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 definitely <laughs> had me like chilling i was mid work session and i had to like chill for a second and just live with the expression and i just wanted to uh communicate you know cuz even like i i i've i've had uh uh, moments of grieving and and recognizing you know particularly particularly important people to me that um that aren't here anymore you know and it was it was it was very powerful I'll just say that I appreciate that it um it was an excellent a most ex excellent the the project the whole project the pandemic everything it was a great space container with to 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 play in, mm -hmm. and I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I had to turn off the voices that said, "Well, that's kind of personal." Yeah, that's kind of like nobody wants to hear a sad record. They want to hear something, you know. And I couldn't even say that it wouldn't be sad. Mm -hmm. All I knew is it had to be authentic because I couldn't sing and pretend at the same time. Yeah. So if whatever came up and came out, if it was personal, if it was raw, if it was a little bit uncomfortable, so be it. Mm. And I took a line from my grandmother's book of sayings, which was what other people think about you is none of your business. <laughs> And that is so funny. That's such a funny thing, you know, because she didn't say, don't think about what other people think, don't concern. She said, it's none of your business. You just show up, do the work to the best of your ability and walk away. Yes. Let the chips fall as chips do and then go on to the next project. Because if you get too invested in how's it going to turn out, how are they going to market it, what are people going to think, you know, that blocks the creative inner child that wants to work with delight, mm -hmm. that wants to work without um, excuses that have that are outside the art, just wanting to be. Yeah, and, and we're all human. We all have moments where it's like, eesh, it's hard right up in here. That's when it's time for a cookie. I'm all over that cookie thing. I'm all, all I'm all over the cookie book. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think uh, as we were pondering the uh, the segue into um, into Ogaruth, into well, I guess I should explain what it is as if, um, well, I haven't explained it to you, Nina, so. Um, Ogaruth is the result of diving into, you know, into the studio and writing, I think. The, spell, with, spell it for me. O-L-G-A-R-U-T-H. Ogaruth. Yes, so, Ogre is the name of my mother's, my father's mother. Ruth is the name of my mother's mother. So I combined my two um, grandmother's names uh, to define the, the, the city, the fictional city that the characters that unfolded within the first few months of writing and drawing and painting and conceptualizing and creating problems and creating solutions and creating the stories that connect those together um, and creating more questions and like, yeah, like I've, I've, I've been sending, the texts that I've been sending to, 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 to Pierce have been pictures for the most part, you know? And yeah, they've just been, uh, I mean, a lot of them are in the background right now, mm -hmm. but they're, they're, 
the first stage of this uh, of this project, or my my initial plan for this project was uh, to to. I feel like I'm answering questions, but I need to rewind to the questions before. Yeah, I, I, I had a moment where I was just pondering my goals and my ambitions of, you know, like, I want to be a 60 something year old guy, you know, weird dude in a studio where people are coming from around the world and collecting my work. Why? Why do you, why, what's going to do that? You know, and, <laughs> you know, like that, that's so the more I pondered, the more I realized, you know, and paid attention to, to what, what I tune into is intellectual property. It's, you know, creating my version of Marvel comics. It's creating a world filled with characters that people relate to. And they again, come to my space to, um, to connect with the spectacle, you know, of whatever, like I said, Joshua May studios version of Disneyland is, you know? Um, so, I also just pondered the 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 way I wanted to 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 create uh, proposals for animation studios and video gaming because those are the the main art broadcasting platforms that speak to the the type of visions that I want to put out there. You know, like right now, some of my favorite art is anime and watching video gameplay and seeing very experimental methods where people can explore worlds. So um, first things first, I, I got to write, I got to write this stuff, you know, I got to, I got to make sure it, 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 it's good, you know, um, and compelling. So anyway, I dove into the studio on doing that all through 2020. And then by 20. 2021, the beginning of that, the conversation of NFTs was coming around. And I guess it already, it had always been there, but there was suddenly tremendous amount of value rushing into the space. And as I, as I explored the conversation um, and explored what this technological breakthrough is, I realized, oh crap, I can actually not only create a fictional world, I can automatically create an economy within the world. I can automatically within Ogaruth create a chamber of commerce. You know, I can automatically create a cultural district and create fictional shops selling fictional goods. I can create fictional restaurants selling fictional food <laughs> that people are purchasing with real money, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I can create something that instead of me going to Netflix and Hulu and Rockstar Games with proposals, they are coming to me with a proposal because I'm, I'm self-funding and executing the, um, the production of this myself. I, I create three seasons of, of, a, of a series and drop it on my own website. And then they're like, put it on our website, please. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. after I developed the demand for it. So yeah, like that um, is what these algorithm tokens are all about. You know, they're, they're storytelling devices and they're uh, value communication devices between me and the people who have been following me for thus far, you know? Yeah. Uh, and uh, what you're describing is both like radically imaginative, but it's also the world that we live in. All of our currency is a storytelling device. It tells a story, it has language on it, and God we trust, it has white men's faces on it for the most part. For the most part. You know, and the story that they wanna tell oftentimes, at least in the modern era of paper currency as, co you know, coins that, represent value usually tethered to gold for a long time but depending on where you came from it could have been anymore <laughs> could have been cowrie shells could have been a lot of other stuff the blockchain you know and the stories that they tell are are appropriated from other cultures the eagle you know and and the pyramid that is on the dollar bill is just yoinked 
yoink, away yoink. From, <laughs> from Egypt. You know what I mean? The, 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 the narratives, the quotes, e pluribus unum, it's just a, it's just a mixtape at the mint. They're just like, oh yeah, we want some Egyptian. We want some Greek, a little bit of boom, sure. boom, boom. And they make their, they make their um, currency and we ascribe value to it. And it's a value that they can manipulate on their own terms. You know what I mean? They can raise the interest rate, lower it. It's just this fictional world. We're living in a fic in a world where we're ruled by a fictional currency. And so yeah. in, in that way, it's as it's as normal as the air we breathe, <laughs> right? Yes. But then it's also what's radically imaginative about it is that you're creating your own chamber of commerce, your own marketplace, your own virtual coin. And through technology, you know, and blockchain and, and where we are now, we have the ability to do that. Well, you know, what a beautiful time and a necessary time for our voices as Black visionaries to be at the vanguard of shaping uh -huh. what new money looks, smells, tastes, feels like, and the story that it tells. And listen, the fact that we're having this conversation today on the same day uh, Queen Mother Maya Angelou was placed on a on a quarter, first black woman ever on a U.S. currency. Like that tells me that the mint is like, oh shit! <laughs> like they're coming up with their own money, they're putting their own people on it. Like we gotta catch up because yeah. nobody's gonna use our money anymore if it's just old white guys. Like it's not a celebration of Maya Angelou. They're trying to keep up with Ola Root. They yeah, said, yeah. Oh, no, your, <laughs> if you had a choice between your grandmamas <laughs> and like, okay, who we got? Uh, Maya Angelou, okay, okay, who else we got? Like, they're trying to keep up with the wave that you're on. And, and I just thought that was so, not even ironic. It was just, you know, sy synchronous. That, Synchronicity. That, that, would be the first thing I see on my Instagram feed when I opened up my phone this morning. Yes. My she was on a coin and she was a beloved elder and family friend, uh, a friend of our family. And then I was like, oh yeah, we're talking about money, you know, new money uh, in, in a couple hours uh, with Joshua Mays. So anyway, that's just wild to me. <laughs> yeah, I... I there was two points that <laughs> as you were talking that I wanted to, well, the first point was, uh, did you get a chance to watch the, the, the previous talk that I did with King Brit? No, I didn't. I you didn't. talked with King Brit? Long. Yeah. From Philly? Yeah. Oh man. I want to <laughs> see that. I know King Brit. Yeah. He's, he's, oh, he's, you know he's, King he's never mind. I, the people I like, <laughs> I like. Oh, okay. Afrotechnica. No, he's a he's a dear friend and he did the first of these series of talks with me. So I spoke to him probably about like three weeks ago and he's in San Diego. But he mentioned, uh, well, he, he has this study of of. Black Tronica, a term coined by Charlie Dark, you know, a UK DJ producer, and it's. He, he basically went to uh, UCSD, you know, yeah. and brought them a, a, a course that he, he, he recognized that there was a, a blind spot and an opportunity in that blind spot. And I think that that is a poignant uh, uh, idea, you know, that should so, you know, I don't mind bringing it up every time <laughs> that I that I have these talks of if you don't see yourself, then that means there's an opportunity to pre present there, that 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 means there's a blind spot that people are neglecting themselves of. And it's time for you to bring value to the room, you know, as opposed to that. as opposed to protesting, as opposed to going on to social media and saying, you know what? I didn't see myself today. And that's what's wrong with the world. You know, and it's like, no, that's that blind spot is your stage. You know, step onto it and and 
execute the vision, you know. The other point I wanted to bring up was I I was having a conversation with my dad and he as I was trying to explain NFTs to him, you know, and he, he's 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 not really um understood of what it all means. He also was like out loud explaining it to himself in that gold itself is as a substance uh utility wise for everything that you can use it for there's at least two or three other things that are more useful than it you know gold yes you know yeah so for for everything that it is used for um yeah you you can you can you can use aluminum or copper (laughs) and and that's what happens (laughs) except for the fact that people in power made all their stuff with it you know and they assessed the value to it they 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 made this you know moderately uh useful substance into a highly valuable thing just based upon human ideas and communication of ideas and and seeing this shiny shiny yellow substance and suddenly we point to it and we we say that's the standard you know of of value you know and it has just the right amount of rarity for us to 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 say that oh i want some of that in my pocket or does you know? it i mean you know the rarity the, i remember learning about the beer's diamond company diamonds and aren't how, that rare and how they've cornered the market and monopolized it in a way to create scarcity to inflate value so who knows man oil you know gold diamonds i'll tell you what though whatever you don't have and need is what's important sure so there are places where water is the commodity of the highest value there are all these sort of allegorical stories, you know, the Midas, King Midas, and all these other people who chased after one commodity when something else was really the thing that was of more value in the end. Because you can't, because we are mortal, mm-hmm. because we don't come here to stay forever, that changes the whole conversation about hoarding stuff. Sure. About being the one who dies with the most stuff. Sure. Because now you will. A lot of stuff or a little stuff. But I want to hear more about this world you've created with your grandmother's name. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's so much going on. And there's a part of me that, that, that is so excited to, to, to share and put it out there. And part of me that's like, is that a spoiler? You know, like, do I want to <laughs> do I wait? wait for that to 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 be revealed four years from now or next year or 10 years from now um yeah uh but what can i share uh well let me uh, when i think about so first of all i hate spoilers i i don't like the the <laughs> surprise thing being revealed but i'll say this um you know my brother and i read infinity wars in the mid 90s uh huh and it became a the snap became a surprise yeah. to the whole world again. Yes, in twenty twenty, in twenty twenty. So, uh, yeah, I, I do think that you know, even if you plant some seeds now uh, during yes. this conversation, you can continue to reinvent the story in new mediums without even changing. I mean the the. The movie was, you know, fairly faithful to the comic book. Um, oh. there, there were some big differences, actually, but you know that part, the snap wasn't uh, wasn't an exaggeration. But yeah. nobody was like it was no less thrilling to witness. Sure, sure. Uh, at, at the end of the film. So anyway, that's an offering to you as you as you wrestle with this conversation <laughs> and others about what to reveal and not reveal. Um, well. I'll- I'll give a little something. And I, I, I know I had a conversation with you and I, I, I've been, again, I've been having select conversations where 
for me, it's an exhaust system of these ideas because like I, I, I get them, I get super excited and I wonder if it's as good as an idea as, as I think it is. So I call my sister, I call my friend or call whoever, you know, but one aspect of Olga Ruth um, is it's a, it's a place of immense vision and there are certain occurrences that have brought that forth. And one occurrence is the invention of a device called the Edelin. And with the activation of the Edelin, Olga Ruth immediately uh, became a convergence point of 88 different timelines into one spot. So within about a 40 mile radius of the Edelin, when this device was activated, you are suddenly in contact with people from uh, 220 years in the past for 44 timelines, five years apart, and 222 years, 220 years in the future, five, uh, five years apart timelines. So yeah, it, it, it is if in Durham, the Edelin was activated suddenly you would be filled with people from the past and the future and would be able to interact with them yes um the closer you are in time proximity the more solid the those closer are. you are like the timeline you're on so, yes the closer I to your timeline the more solid the person appears so wow. yeah if you're, if you're sitting with somebody in the room with somebody 50 years of the future they're going to appear more solid a hundred years less solid uh, further on, uh, you know, accordingly. Um, but in Ogruth, consciousness itself is an attractive force. So if you interact with somebody consciously from 200 years in the future, they are going to become solid and be with you in that moment. You know, if they, pa if they pass you an orange from a tree 200 years in the future or the past, it's going to be with you in that moment. If you put it on a table and turn your consciousness away from it, it will go back to its time timeline oh. that it originated. Okay. So one, I actually have a storyline that I was, I was super hyped upon. You know, I, I don't know if I sent you a text saying, you'll ask me about the Albrook invasion next time you talk to me. People. <laughs> but it literally is about the only time with which there was an invasion of, uh, the, the country's name is Lindquist that Olga Ruth is contained within. And the only successful invasion of, of Olga Ruth was by a, but was by a, 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 a tribes person from a neighboring country, you know, who created a militia, you know, and the activation of the Edelin for the past timelines was as if a city of God suddenly appeared, you know, and it was a tremendous disruption of whatever religious storylines that were, were being maintained. So most of the visitors to Olgaruth from the past timelines are religious pilgrims. Um, there, you know, but, there was a man who 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 uh who because of of whatever tensions that that existed uh created an invasion i should, I should probably just read because <laughs> as I'm, I'm i'm wondering if i'm forgetting details and neglecting things um um this is very bad for the for the uh, occupation. So it was an early event in the Albrook district marked as the only successful breach of security. 
approximately approximately 60 warriors from a neighboring village snuck through the Orgoruthian borders, killing 12 and injuring 80, but abruptly ending their siege, siege within the hour, perhaps minutes after it began. The invaders immediately surrendered or retreated. The surrendered invaders immediately became Ogoruthian pilgrims. The siege is explained from the perspective of an invader who retreated after attacking a man, leaving him for dead, who was perhaps an Ogoruthian security officer, but he was immediately confronted by the same man, weaponless, multiple times over. The story is also told from an Ogoruthian survivor relaying their experience and detailing the ev evolution of the Albrook commemorative holiday. And finally, from the perspective of the lead invader who surrendered after being stopped in battle by a familiar man and was nearly lost, who was nearly lost in his emotions while claiming to be himself. Mm. He was held in an unlocked room with a single guard watching over him while in this first in only year of captivity, he was visited by various future versions of himself. Then various descendants, a daughter, a son, a mm. grandson, and a great grandson wow. who, who cared and communicated the value of him being alive and healing from the trauma that transformed him into a soldier ready to die and lead others to death. Ooh. Wow. Finally, he was visited by a descendant of a person he killed at the night of the invasion. That person who died was his great grandmother. He revealed to him how in these first weeks of his captivity, that single guard watching over him was his father, an uncle, and a grandfather, all from various timelines. Mm. They and other descendants uh, from his own family protected him from elder vengeful family members where they knew this man was going to contribute to, tremendously to Ogaruthian future. The man is beside himself for weeks, pondering and confronting himself psychologically with these revelations. The story ends with this witness perpetrator of the attacks marching alongside future versions of himself to the five year anniversary, anniversary of the invasion. Bearing true understanding of the peace he disrupted, he's dedicated to prevent himself and his malicious atrocious actions while healing his own inner trauma and repeating this five-year Ogaruthian ceremony. Mm. So yeah, I'm writing a bunch of stories like that that are based upon, yeah, the idea of, of making a mistake and there being a platform where future versions of yourself confront you, especially if you make a grave mistake like invading Ogaruth, <laughs> you know, but yeah that's interesting it, it reminds me of like basically the role that we play in this life around healing the generational traumas of our ancestors but the the technology what what's the technology again called edelin. the edelin the edelin gives you the opportunity to do that in real time and what's interesting about generational trauma you kind of inferred this earlier but you know, we also have generational resiliency that we inherit from our ancestors. It's like this kind of yin and yang of the vulnerable and uh, creatures that we are, or at least receptive creatures um, that we can inherit both kind of, you know, negative and positive, uh, uh, or we can absorb a negative or positive inheritance from our ancestors but also around the healing that places even outside of your bloodline, there could be someone who harmed you, which mom, we talked about this. I was so raw when my dad died. I was in my feelings about all types of stuff. And uh, who was it that told me the kiss on both cheeks thing? Who was that? Uh, that was- It was the old white lady. She Sheila, Stacy. Sheila. Sheila. So th she said this thing, you gotta take your enemy and visual- or The who person you, who's harmed but you. The person who's harmed you. Okay, I use the word enemy, but- the person who's harmed you visualize you taking their face in your hands, looking them in the eye and kissing both cheeks and telling them, I forgive you. I love you, bro. I love you. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. I wasn't ready for that. I was like, that's some bullshit. But I was like, okay. <laughs> Listen, but, but that thing right there, woo, that if you can get with some of that kind of energy, oh my that God. is so liberating. Trans 
transformative liberating i love that i love the story i love the layered uh the layeredness of it and when you create possibility in in a way that we want to call we label it imaginary Mm. it becomes just real it just becomes real because then you can invoke those same kind of changes in spirit because we're really talking about energy right sure talking about energy um if we're able to channel those you know in in certain ways we're really i mean we're really doing the stuff that we say superheroes do absolutely you know the things that we see that are impossible to us like flying Mm-hmm. Like moving through space and time, like transmutation, like teleportation, like, you know, um, taking a wound, like a real wound, you're bleeding, you'll die if you don't get a tourniquet on it and going to before it <laughs> happened. Yes. And, and avoiding the injury to begin with. I mean, all of that is super exciting to me. I'm just ready to leap in there and 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 the imaginary muscle that it takes to follow all these all this action mm-hmm. is something that will develop, I think, as you get into it. It's kind of like reading Doom. Oh my yes. God. So at the very beginning you're like what? What the what the what? Yes. But as you trust mm. the storyteller, yes. anything they say will become your truth. And yeah. you are totally inside of it. And the, uh, the, the quote unquote real world, the world that you're sitting uh, in holding a book on your lap, yes. that thing disappears and you yes. enter the book. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's definitely what I noticed about uh, becoming a reader. That, that like, I think it was like 20, 25, when I first really picked up a book and dove into it, you know, and was like, oh, like I actually like this aspect. But very good books, well-written books do just that. They, they dissolve the world around you, you know, and have you lost in that, you know? Yeah, and Dune was such a, the, all the first three Dunes, you know, did you, did you actually see the movie? Yeah, well, we've seen all the we movies. Watched we watched it here as a family. Okay. That was my parents' favorite book. And yeah, uh, that was the book we came together on. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. Now for me, it's funny because you know, when, when people talk about if a good book inspires a good movie, if you want to enjoy them both, watch the movie first. Because it's always gonna be worse than the book. <laughs> 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 you know. And it's funny because like I like I have a friend who 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 debates that things are like there's like Akira is just bad because the 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 manga, the comic book is just epic and it's totally a, a different from that. And it's like that's the mistake you're making. <laughs> like watch watch the movie first. The movie's always going to be abridged and and it's going to leave out details that just can't be translated in the same way when you are sitting with the book before you and the words are just relaying. Uh, the movie's playing in your mind, yeah. Yes, well, I, exactly. For me, I, I find that I've got to, you know, just because of when Frank Herbert book, mm-hmm. the books were, uh, were alive in me. Yes. And this is the problem. Your eye eats up more brain energy than any other of your senses. Mm. So my eye was attracted to the words, but once the words crossed the barrier and became mine, I had my own vision of what the uh, Bene Gesserit witch looks like. Mm-hmm. I had my own, she, she looked like me. Yes. You know, she had thick lips. She was dark. She, yes. you know, he gave a description, but I had my own cultural definition for this, for this being. 
Yes. And then, uh, so I'm watching the movie and I'm I'm critiquing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm critiquing all these people. It's like, why did they, why did they, you know, put this person in this world? They don't look anything like <laughs> Frank Herbert described. Exactly. Exactly. So, so yeah, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta see the movie for sure. And I want to reread the book, you know, um, but I'm gonna reread it after I watch the book, watch the movie watch because the movie it's always gonna be worse, <laughs> you know. But the movie's worth watching. It sounds like it is. It is. It's okay. worth watching. Okay. It, yeah. it, ends, it ends about the the only. Well, I don't know. If the, this isn't really a spoiler, but it um it gets about a quarter way, a third of the way through the book. Through the book. Yeah. Um. So if you and I say that because. You might want to, if you haven't watched it yet and you're not burning to watch it, you may want to wait until the, the whole trilogy is all. Oh, it's all done. Yeah. I don't even know if, um, you know, the, the books, the, the movies that tried to do more than a third failed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because it was too much, it was too much uh, to, you know, without the movie being five hours long. Yeah, it was yeah. Too much. Well, that's the thing, it's like, Lord of the Rings did it right. Like they just put it all together. And I was like, let's keep you here. Let's keep you in these costumes. We're staying in New Zealand. Welcome <laughs> in all, you know, 10 Three hours. Of at once. Yes. Yeah. Can you spell franchise? <laughs> like, and yeah, you know, in, in like watching the Matrix and seeing like, God damn it, they should have did that with the Matrix. <laughs> they should have mm -hmm. pulled it all together. Um, but yeah, like I... Anyway, I'm excited to, to to try and check that out. I know we've been talking for an hour now, and I don't want to hold you up. It's been like such an incredible pleasure of uh, sharing time and space with you. Um, I really am looking forward to getting back to Durham. I think I mentioned to to Pierce that I love the idea of coming and contributing to your art collection in some way or another. Please come. You got a place to stay, brother. We won't leave you out in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate you so much. I actually, it's funny because I actually have a high school friend, like one of my best friends in high school. Him and his family moved to Durham. And I've been meaning to like, yo, you got to see my friend Pierce and see the mural that I created at his spot. You know, and he has two, I think... Time goes by fast. I can't remember if these kids are in elementary or maybe they're in college now because time goes by that fast <laughs> but yes i want to hook you up with my man thomas robinson you know i look forward to it but yeah thank you again for offering uh the the the, the brain space to to have this share these words with me and congratulations on all that's coming in your direction um if you want to plug anything within the last few seconds of this, Black Space. Uh, uh, well, the, the, yeah. the one plug I'll say is just going to circle back uh, for anyone mm -hmm. listening. So we met uh, through Black Space, which is a community space uh, for Black imagination to run wild. Um, and uh, I'm really excited about your project, the NFT project uh, through Olga Ruth and the story behind it, the world that you're creating is just so exciting to me. Very As fun. someone, you know, the child of a couple Dune parents, we want our passports to Olga Ruth. And mom was like, you getting some tokens? Ask Joshua, he'll give me some tokens too. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're just, uh, I I'm so glad that you're building this universe. Um, because you are also building portals to um, imagination that is beyond what you think you're doing. You think you're doing something, you're doing more than you think you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at these hexagons here, and I'm like, okay. Yeah. You know that's the shape of melanin. You know that's the chemical shape of melanin. You know that, right? I didn't you know look that. for the chemical shape <laughs> of melanin, and that's what you got right there. Yeah. Oh, so oh. whether it's conscious, unconscious, or whatever. You were working on some alternate. It's all. Absolutely. And everything has meaning. Yes. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Everything has, everything you discussed had meaning, deep layered meaning. I'm like, right on. Good for you. If you mm -hmm. ever want to talk to an old lady, <laughs> you ever want to run some ideas by an old lady. 
Or if I want to talk to you, who do I got to yeah, call? I'm, 60, I'm, 60, I'm 65 years old. That that counts as old lady. I claim it, man. I ain't scared. <laughs> yes. No, I, again, this has been so great to, to reconnect with you. Um, and I'm, I'm taking this energy back into the studio and back into um, just devising this as something that brings as much value you know, to the people that have, again, communicated so much belief in me and what I do over the years, you know, it, it's just such an infusion of, of, of meaning into the moment, you know, so again, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys go. I'll be giving you a call, Pierce, you know, Thank and you. I will be good. sending texts with all sorts of crazy imagery and ideas, <laughs> you know, that are attached to everything we discussed you know thank you. so i appreciate it all right so, peace brother thank you enjoy the rest of your day thanks you too peace y'all